Hello. So today we're going to speak about circulatory failure, or also known as shock. So the defining feature of shock is a decrease in the delivery of oxygen to the tissues and failing to meet the metabolic needs. So therefore, shock should not be synonymous with hypertension, as hypertension is often a late manifestation of shock where cardiac output is, main, is low while the blood pressure is maintained. So how can you say in, ob in objective matter that sh shock might be happening in the patient? You might find an increase in base deficit, an increase in blood lactate, or a decrease in urine output. When categorizing the causes of circulatory failure, one can put them into two broad categories a decrease in stroke volume or a systemic vasodilation. In a decreased stroke volume, one of the causes is a hypovolemic shock. A hypovolemic shock occurs when anything provokes a decrease in blood volume, such as hemorrhage or severe burns. In cardiogenic shock is when there is a severe cardiac impairment, such as in the myocardial infarction or an acute mitral regurgitation. An obstructive shock is when there is an obstruction to the blood flow itself, so such as in major pulmonary embolism, cardiac tamponade, or an attention pneumothorax. The vasodilation causes you have the septic shock. The septic shock is when there is an infection or other inflammatory response leading to a widespread endothelial damage with vasodilation. An anaphylactic shock is an inappropriate vasodilation due to an allergen such as a bee sting. A neurogenic shock occurs when there is a major brain or spinal trauma which in turn leads to an inappropriate vasomotor control. So recognizing the clinical features of circulatory Failure is really important as early institution of treatment correlates with a better prognosis. So in hypervolemic, cardiogenic and obstructive shock, you would have the classical called peripheries with reduced or absent peripheral pulses and a weak central pulse. And in early hemorrhagic shock, you would have a narrow pulse pressure. So you would have a low systolic blood pressure and a high diastolic blood pressure. So going back to physiology, you would note that this systolic blood pressure would be low due to a decrease in stroke volume and the diastolic pressure increases due to vasoconstriction as the body is trying to increase this perfusion. In septic and anaphylactic shock, you would have warm peripheries, a bound in pulse, and here too, there would also be a distinctive pressure pattern early on in the disease. There will be a low diastolic pressure and a normal systolic blood pressure. A low diastolic blood pressure is due to the increased vasodilation. And the normal systolic blood pressure is a decrease in the afterload, therefore maintaining the stroke volume. In a neurogenic shock, there would be vasodilation and hypotension. However, due to the abnormal vasomotor response, there would be a paradoxical bradycardia. But an important thing to note, in the later stages of sepsis and anaphylaxis, they might have called peripheries due to the leakage from the capillaries. But if you resuscitate them with fluid, they would respond and they would have their warm peripheries.